I forgot to make the chair. I started by 3D modeling a classic Adirondack style chair in on shape. The first thing I modeled was the profile of the bottom seat of the chair, and then I added slats over it. From here, I could add armrests and then the back of the chair. I am also using the laser joint plugin to add box joints and notches so that everything will slip together and hold in real life. The last step was creating a drawing of the parts in the program to get the vector files of the shapes that will be laser cut. And then it was time to pick out some slabs to make this out of. I'm gonna throw those slabs onto the new big penguin CNC machine and we're gonna see how this goes. This is the first time that I'm actually putting a piece of wood in the machine to do anything substantial with it. It'll be fine. All right. For the laser cutting process, it is crucial that this oak is completely flat and in pieces that are precisely half inch thick. I set the penguin CNC up with the dimensions of my slab and I'm starting by going with quarter inch passes to remove material. All right, so since this is the first pass and the slab was just dried, it has a bit of a bow to it. So that'll be no good. Taking a couple of pieces of scrap, sticking it under. The CNC machine has a vacuum table, but I don't have that part functional yet. So for right now, I'm just going to use a couple of inch and a half screws. I'm just going to toenail the slab to the table, and that should keep it from sliding around as the machine is doing its thing. I also took a moment to confirm that this wasn't going to hit anything as the machine moved around in the space. All right, we have clearance, we've homed the machine, and now we just need to give it its origin points at the height of the material. And then for Z, I need to find the highest part of the board which I think is... Done. It took a few passes, and then I had one side flat. Brooke helped me clean up the sawdust and we flipped it so the flat side was down and repeated the planing process on the other side of the slab. And then I pulled a perfectly flat slab off the bed, loaded up the next one and headed over to the bandsaw to handle the first resaw. I'm resawing to three quarter inches to ensure that I have enough to work with to plane each of these down once more on the CNC router to an exact half inch. Most of the slabs gave me two pieces to work with, but some of them only gave me one. to a uniform thickness 
that I preset. That way, if I mess it up, I don't care. I reprogrammed the machine to get those down to quarter inch to see how much precision I could get. I also tried using hot glue here as well to secure the boards down to the bed. It ended up being a great way to go and I couldn't ask for better precision than what I got. From there, I was confident putting the good pieces of the resawed boards on the bed and getting them down to that half inch. Again, having a perfect uniform thickness is going to be really important for the laser cutting portion of this build. One of the big advantages to using two machines in the project is that they can both be working at the same time. At this point, we have one slab, the right thickness for the chair. So I'm going to get the laser going and this will start cutting out the slabs as we finish planing them down on that machine. And if it goes how I picture it in my head going, I can just kind of bounce between the two machines while the machines do kind of all the work today. I'm gonna to do a test cut, but I'm gonna use a piece of the chair as the test cut, because that way if it works, we can just kind of get going with it. Now, start with the chair brace. That looks like it's about 45 degrees. For this first cut, I used the same settings Brooke had used to get through slabs on her window box build. That test cut ended up definitely being a usable piece for the final chair. However, I did need to go in with a razor blade to get all the pieces to pop out fully. All right, that's pretty good. I'm just gonna decrease my speed by two. That small change made a big difference and I was able to get a perfect cut right through a half inch of oak on the laser. As these laser cuts were happening, the CNC router was continuing to plane down the next set of slabs to be laser ready. With the settings and processes honed in, from here it was just a matter of working all the oak through both machines. It was pretty cool to get everything in the shop going and by the end of the day I had a complete pile of pieces to use to put together my final chair. So we have all these spots where knots are and pieces that get kind of chipped out, some checking, different things like that. And now I need to just kind of stabilize those parts so that it won't impact the integrity of the piece at the end. So to do that, I'm just going to fill all of these with resin. First, I put painter's tape behind all the open spots to prevent spilling. And then I mixed up some Total Boat high performance epoxy with a medium hardener. Once that fully cures, it gets sanded with an 80 grit until flush with the oak. Laser cutting leaves a blocky and charred edge. Uh, rather than hiding that or covering up and removing it, um, my preference is to showcase it and make it look... I'm going to take Total Boat Halcyon Clear and activated charcoal powder. Um, which is relatively inexpensive and easy to come by. And we're gonna mix them together in this cup. I'm going for a sheer even wash of black without any clumps. When this gets brushed over the blackened edge, it will make for a much more uniform color and seal in the laser cutting residue so it doesn't smudge everywhere and make a mess. I'm not bothering to be too careful with this because this is going on before the finishing sand. When I go in with the 220 grit all over the front and back of each piece, the sanding pad removes any black smudges, leaving a crisp edge. 
Also, I want to point out that the result is matte, even though I used a satin halcyon finish. And then I took my time and got through sanding up all the pieces. All right, now that I have taken all the time to do all of the sand, resin filling, painting the edges with halcyon, it is time to put it together. Hey, you didn't do any of those things. Oh, you did do the resin. Yeah. Let's get glue. Woo! Gooiness. Ooh. Where are my clamps? <clears throat> This is going together with type three wood glue, so it'll be nice, sturdy, and waterproof. I started with the base and figured I'd work my way up. Brooke's help was great because she could chase behind me and clean up the glue drips as I went. Honestly, this is a little tricky to put together because, well, just because it's so big. So it's kind of hard to balance and get together. And we're kind of running out of clamps that will fit around this thing. So we're gonna stop here. We have the whole base together. We're gonna let this set up so we can remove the clamps and then use them going forward to finish the rest of the glue up. Clamps are off. With the frame together, the next thing I focused on was getting the seat slats into place. Since the chair material was so thin, I added additional supports under the armrests, added extra support to the back of the chair, and placed vertical pieces under each seat slat to stiffen them up. All right, we're slabbing up some mulberry for chair number two. Let's see if these changes made the difference. This was admittedly a really discouraging part of this build, but the good news is that at this point, I was nice and well-practiced at the process, so it went relatively smoothly. So I just got the cross supports in. They were a little hard to balance while we pushed it together, but I can already tell that getting these pieces underneath the uh, actual seat pieces are really gonna go a long way to making this journey. to be. 
also of note here. This is my first time ever working with Mulberry. Brooke and I milled up a whole lot of it, and I figured it was about time we actually worked with it to see what it's like. You pass me the glue. It's a hardwood, and the color starts out in intense yellow. I kind of liked it with the contrasting color of the laser edge. All right, I was trying to do this whole thing without using any screws, but I don't really have a good way to glue the back of these armrests to the support because there's a slight angle to it. So I'm just gonna put a screw in the back of each armrest going down into the support. And that should just pull it all together and make it nice. I'm using inch and a half decking screws, which are kind of all weather since it's gonna be outside. And I think two screws in the back, not so bad. The slats ended up being the last thing to go in during this assembly. And once the glue dried, I went over everything with one last finishing sand before taking this thing outside for its paint job. I'm going with some of this stuff. It's good stuff. Again, I was curious to see how the mulberry would look, and I kind of loved the yellow with the laser edge. However, I'm also throwing in some finish shots of what it looks like now after sitting outside for a little bit. The color of the wood deepened up a whole lot to this really rich copper penny kind of color that I'm also a big fan of. Oh wait, one last thing. If you watch this whole video, then you're having a pretty good day. The files are available on makersworkshop.com if you want to try this project yourself. And don't forget to click subscribe so I can see you next time. Bye.